From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. Teenagers are covering this morning after being chased and shot by a group on dirt bikes in Philadelphia. What investigators are saying about a possible motive. And the results are in from primary day in Pennsylvania. We are breaking down some of the big local races. Cloudy and not as cold this morning, but Kate's tracking some scattered showers that could pop up today. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the News at 7, streaming on CBS News Philadelphia and on Philly 57. I'm Jim Donovan. And I'm Janelle Burrell. Glad to have you with us on this Wednesday morning. And we're going to kick things off with our next weather forecast meteorologist, Kate Bilo, standing by with all the details. Hi, Kate. Hey there, Janelle and Jim. Good morning, everyone. We are waking up on this Wednesday with some clouds outside. It looks like a dreary day. It looks like last week, late last week, when we had the clouds and chill temperatures, but it's actually starting to brighten up pretty quickly here across parts of the area, especially from the city on north and west, seeing the clouds starting to mix out. We still have cloud cover hanging on in the Poconos. We still have a lot of cloud cover down the shore as well, but improving conditions as we go through the day, more sunshine and the shower chances have been few and far between all morning. They continue to be that way and will be that way this afternoon as well. So a cloudy start, still a couple of sprinkles out there here and there, but sun breaks out by midday. It is mild and breezy this afternoon. This is a cold front, but the actual cold front is going to slowly progress through and kind of stall out overnight into tomorrow. So the chilly air does not get in until tomorrow. A stray shower, a thunder shower this afternoon, but I'm talking one or two spots see a pop up and the rest of us are dry. Right now we're in the low 50s, which is a big improvement. In fact, 10 to as much as near 20 degrees warmer than 24 hours ago. So this shows the difference between yesterday's temperature at this time and today's. We are a full 10 degrees warmer in Philadelphia thanks to the clouds overnight. So a couple of sprinkles here and there. Those are clearing out quickly. Right now just a couple over Bucks County and a few down in Cumberland County, but we are starting to clear out and the sun breaks through mid to late morning and we're warming up with sunshine this afternoon, a high near 70. A drop in the mercury and then a huge warm up in the seven day. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Let's send it over to Chandler Lutz for your morning traffic. Hi Chandler. Good morning, Kate. Well, we are getting busy along the blue route right now. We have two big accidents partially blocking the roadway in both directions here. So we'll start off northbound here in Delco. Just after McDade Boulevard, you can see just one lane is able to get by around the curve here. Police, fire crews all on scene. Looks like you can see at least one car involved in this accident. Again, only allowing one lane to get by. Delays they start right around 95 and if only one lane remains, it's going to just build that volume even pouring on the 95. We're also very heavy southbound. This is after Baltimore Pike due to an accident just ahead. That is the roadway partially blocked. This is causing major delays pouring back to about Broom Mall right now. 72 minutes. That's the travel time you're looking at as you travel the Blue Route southbound from the Turnpike down to 95, Jim. Thank you very much, Chandler. Breaking overnight, a teenager is chased down and shot by a group of dirt bike riders in Philadelphia's Pass Young Square neighborhood. And police believe that group was trying to rob that teen. CBS News Philadelphia's Jan Carabeo joining us now with more as police are searching for those alleged attackers. Jan, good morning. Janelle and Jim, good morning. Police say the 17 year old victim was on a motorized scooter when a group of eight doubled up on four dirt bikes, first tried to rob him, and then chased him down and shot him. It all ended here around 12:30 this morning at 10th and Federal Streets. CBS News Philadelphia on scene as police searched for evidence and found a spent shell casing and the victim's motorized scooter. But witnesses who were with the victim at the time tell police the attempted robbery actually started just about 10 blocks away at 10th and South Streets. They tell police the 17-year-old tried to get away after that attempted robbery, but the eight males on four dirt bikes chased him and eventually opened fire, shooting the 17-year-old once in the leg. Take a listen to what police say happened next. We believe the 17-year-old, after being shot, was able to drive his motorized scooter about 100 feet south on 10th Street, where he crashed into a parked unattended vehicle. That's where we found the scooter. That's where we found the 17-year-old shooting victim. That's where police rushed him to Jefferson Hospital, where he shot in the leg. That 17-year-old is now in stable condition this morning. Meantime, police will be checking surveillance video today, hoping to track down the people responsible. Janelle. All right, Jan, thank you for that. Turning to election results, according to election officials, voter turnout in Philadelphia for yesterday's primary was even lower than expected. Officials say roughly 14% of registered voters cast their ballots. 
Now to the results of some of those primary races. In Northeast Philadelphia, Sean Doherty beat seven-term incumbent State Representative Kevin Boyle, winning the Democratic nomination for the 172nd Legislative District. Doherty is the nephew of former Philadelphia Union leader John Doherty. And the race was not close, with Doherty easily winning with more than 72% of the vote. Boyle held his seat for more than a decade and had been dealing with what his family describes as personal struggles recently. Last week, he had a warrant issued for his arrest. That warrant was later withdrawn on Monday. Now, Doherty, he moves on to face Republican Izaz Gill in November's general election. Gill is the president of the Burl Home Civic Association. He beat Patrick Gishu, a combat veteran. In other results from Tuesday's primary, President Biden winning the Democratic primary, beating challenger Dean Phillips. The president securing 93% of the vote with 95% of precincts reporting. And in the Republican primary, former President Trump has 83% of the vote, challenger Nikki Haley. She dropped out of the race, but her name was still on the ballot. She earned about 17% of the vote. And you can find all of the results from the races in Pennsylvania on our website, cbsphiladelphia.com. Another news court will resume tomorrow in former President Trump's criminal hush money trial in New York City. Proceedings began yesterday with a hearing over whether Trump repeatedly violated a gag order. Then former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker returned to the stand. He testified that during the 2016 campaign, he promised to help suppress stories that could be damaging to the former president in a practice called catch and kill. Prosecutors say the plan was the origin of a $130,000 payment Trump's former fixer Michael Cohen made to adult film star Stormy Daniels. They say it was to keep her quiet about an alleged sexual encounter with Trump who denies it. The Atlantic City School Board last night declined to publicly address the child endangerment charges against Superintendent Laquetta Small and her husband, Atlantic City Mayor Marty Small. They're accused of abusing their teenage daughter. Laquetta Small delivered the superintendent's report last night as scheduled. She did not talk about the charges. Mayor Small was in the audience. The board later went into an executive session to discuss a personnel issue. Pressed by CBS News Philadelphia, the board president would only say uh, it is possible that the personnel issue is about LaQuetta Small. We have no comment on personnel matters. We can't comment on those at this time. I know we have a job to do here, and one of, our, one of the things that we hold serious is talking about personnel matters in the public. So at this time, we have no comment. We cannot discuss it at all. Smalls have denied any wrongdoing. They are scheduled to appear in court next month. Two men now charged with first degree murder in a cold case that dates back to 2008. And investigators say advances in technology is what helped to crack the case here. Police say 47 year old Leroy Julius was assaulted on Hazel Avenue in Ewing Township, New Jersey, 16 years ago. He was found with severe head trauma and his pockets turned inside out. He died at the scene. Well, the case was reopened last year and the Attorney General's office says DNA evidence led them to 36-year-old Brayon Goodman and 41-year-old Jason Howard. I was happy. I'm like, wow, after 16 years, I never thought the case was going to be solved. It's been a little closure that they finally caught, but it's not going to bring them back to us. But it is justice finally to serve. Prosecutors say they are still investigating the murder and they are asking for the public's help. We have their contact information on our website, cbsphiladelphia.com. Now to a string of car thefts that has people in King of Prussia on edge. Police say particular makes and models are being targeted at the Gulf Mills Village apartments. The Upper Marion Police Department says Hondas are specifically being targeted. People who live in the complex say at least three cars have been stolen within the last month. One of the people who had his car stolen says that his new Honda CRV was stolen at the end of March. I was the first guy who experienced this. Then a lot of, lot of thefts happened. They took hardly five minutes to stole my car so I, I don't know they have some uh, software or something like that if you have a newer model honda police are suggesting that you subscribe to the car company's tracking service buy a lock for your steering wheel place apple air tags inside your car and they also say of course to report any suspicious activity well, the city of Philadelphia is still looking for summer lifeguards. Well, if you missed the April 15th deadline, you have another chance to apply. The city is extending the opportunity and will be accepting applications for summer lifeguard positions until May 15th. 
If you apply now, you can secure a $500 end of season bonus. Applicants must be at least 16 years of age. We have an application link on our website, cbsphiladelphia.com.